Hey, I wanted to do a quick update on the Talon GT. For those of you that haven't seen my review video, I will put a link up here for you. Um, basically, following on from that review, um, I have made a few changes, and in this video, I'm just going to be talking about the new cameras I've installed. Um, but the kind of main point I wanted to talk about in this is the motor. A day or two after I posted my review, I went to fly this, and I was having a horrible noise coming from the motor. So uh, once I took this apart, as you can see here, there's a number of the magnets have come loose, which is what was causing the issue. Um, I know that this is a known fault with the earlier batch of these motors. And after contacting Zode, they were very quick to send me out a replacement. So the replacement motor is here, I have installed it. Um, as you can see, it is the same size and it is the same KV, um, but it does have, uh, it says two at the end there, which I'm guessing means this is version two of the motor. And if I spin this around, the kind of really interesting thing was also that it's a branded Sunny Sky motor, which the original wasn't. It was just plain black on the one side and Zode on the other. So I have had a couple of small flights on the new motor, absolutely no problems with it so far. And I haven't heard of anybody having any issues with this version two of the motor. So if you are looking to buy one of these Talon GTs, I would just be careful and make sure you're getting the second version of the motor with the two there and the Sunny Sky brand, and you shouldn't run into any issues. So another thing I've done on the Talon GT is I have changed my cameras. I was using the Runcam 2 for my HD and the standard Foxia HS1177 that I have on a few planes. Um, but I got this nice new camera, which I will do, um, I'm going to do a small review on that once I've gathered some footage. Um, but basically, this camera here, next to this, is actually too wide to fit in the nose of the Talon GT. In there. So what I had to do was, I had this Foxeer Predator 4 mini camera. Um, it's a lot smaller than this camera. If I can put this in here, you'll probably see the difference in the size. So it's quite a bit wider than the Foxeer Predator 4. So I swapped them around and now I can actually fit the DJ in the nose. Another thing I had to do actually, because I know I mentioned in the review that the nose was kind of designed for multiple different cameras. It is still a little bit of a struggle to fit this in. It's um, It really squashes up against the camera, even though it's a small one. Uh, and also, as you can probably see here, I had to, if I can get this to focus, I had to melt away some of this plastic at the top there, just so that I could make the big lens on the DJI Osmo action camera fit in there. So I'll just pop that in there and show you what it looks like. And there it is installed. So I'll just show you on the inside as well. As you can see, it is a real tight fit in there. But I did use the supplied part here, which is designed for a GoPro, uh, and that holds it in the right place. So in a moment, I will show you some footage from these two cameras. Uh, it was a quick flight in low lighting on the evening. And I have to say, so far, I was very impressed with this camera. The picture quality was excellent, and the wide dynamic range on it was very impressive in comparison to the standard Fox here that I've been running. And I really like the stabilization on the Rocksteady with this DJI camera. The only other change I've made here is I decided to configure the auto launch on iNav for the first time ever and give that a go. So um, here's how it went. <laughs> 